undefeated teams left in the Big Ten. Two of them go head-to-head -head Saturday night in West Lafayette. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, glad to be with you on the Toyota College Football Preview Show here on CBSSports.com. Breaking down fourth-ranked Ohio State and number 23 Purdue. The Boilermakers don't have history on their side in this one. They have not started a season 6-0 in 64 years, and that's what's on the line Saturday night. And for more on the Big Ten battle, we bring in Spencer Tillman from Houston, as we do every single week. And, you know, Spence, we'll get to Purdue in a sec, but is it possible that this Ohio State team, a team that went to the national championship game last year, is actually flying under the radar this season? Yeah, I think so, because they've been quiet, and obviously we haven't entered the conference play as yet, and you've had teams like Wisconsin asserting themselves, and as, as little as two weeks ago, we had Penn State as the favorite, and then, of course, Purdue asserting themselves. So all of a sudden, teams that hadn't uh, in the past been part of the debate at this point uh, have been in the four. So I, I, Ohio State, not really impressive in terms of who they play to this point. Yeah, it's possible for them to be considered uh, flying under the radar. The one game that they do have as the marquee is that win at Washington, which we saw USC yeah. struggle with. But yeah, a lot of people didn't see that game, so certainly I agree with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Spence, this game certainly has all the makings of offense, great offense in Purdue, great defense in Ohio State. And the name that people may not know yet is Curtis Painter. He's Purdue's mm -hmm. uh, quarterback, and Joe Tiller said he may be the best throw he's ever had at Purdue. And let's not forget that he had Drew Brees there in West Lafayette. But is this an offense that can actually move the ball on this Ohio State defense? I think they can, and I, and I agree with you that Ohio State defense is always going to be stout under Jim Trestle. I think they're averaging about 7.6 points giving up a game, and that's certainly pretty stingy. But again, I, they are yet to face the type of competition. As you pointed out, the win of Washington was big, but I don't think they've seen a vertical attack quite like this. I think that Ohio State will be fundamentally sound, but I don't think that they can run as fast. I don't think that they can match up at the cover corner positions as well, and I think what you'll see is Curtis Painter exploit those weaknesses at the corner spot for Ohio State. You know, you talked about Ohio State's lack of competition but Purdue you know they've taken on the likes of Kent State and Central yeah, Michigan true. and and, the, and you know point. a tough Notre Dame team this year <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know so their defense has always been the question mark for Joe Tiller and in the last three games they've given up at least three touchdowns in each of the second half so the defense has struggled a as well so for Ohio State here what is the key to keeping that Curtis Painter led offense off the field well, you got to create one, two, and threes and out. You know, that's the, it's not rocket science, and you got to create unfavorable down and distance situations. That's predictable. So even if you have liabilities in your secondary, if it's third and eight versus third and one, now you can bring in your nickel and dime personnel automatically, knowing that the probability that they're going to pass the ball more than six or seven yards down the field is likely. And so that's what you do. You force a one, two, three, and out, and keep them in fa unfavorable down and distance situations. Jason, what about offensively here? What, what's the key for Ohio State offensively in this game? Well, Chris Wells, I mean, they're running back. I mean, he's got three straight 100-yard games. They, no one's done that since uh, Maurice Claret back in 2002, and he had five straight. So I think the ground game, and that plays right into small ball, that's what uh, Trestle likes to play, and it complements his defensive strategy as well. So that's going to be the key for Ohio State. All right, so that's the key for Ohio State, the key for Purdue. A lot of points. Which one, yep. which one wins out in this one? I know you like Ohio State, but I like Purdue in this one. I just think the vertical passing game, you know, you look at Graham Harrell at uh, Tech, and I think Curtis Painter along with him, they're one and two in the country in terms of touchdown passes. That, that's a hard tandem uh, to, to ignore in terms of their, their points and what they're able to generate offensively. And I think Painter will put up tremendous numbers against a pretty stout defense, boosting the credibility of Purdue and moving them up the charts. All right, well, if Painter and Purdue win this game, you can start throwing his name in for the Heisman as well. All right, Spence, thank you very <laughs> you much. Bet. We will see you on the College Football Today on Saturday. All right, Jason, we'll see you. All right, against what Spencer said, I like the Buckeyes, as he did say. And, you know, they may not have the longest winning streak in the nation overall, but they do have the longest regular season winning streak in the football bowl subdivision. That is 23 straight games. And two kick it off Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And for more on this one or any other in week six of the college football season, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. With Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.